Hello, bonjour, salam alaikum, namaste, nice to see you again, it's been a little while. So what we're going to talk about today is what I'm wearing and also my favourite cookbooks that I use for inspiration. So this is a an India, made in India, designed um, by an English woman called Caroline and the name of her business is Benjanan. I'll put all this information accompanying this video. This is a silk cotton mix. It's hand screen printed in Jaipur. It is covered in birds and flowers. It's very pretty. It's like the dresses we used to wear in the um, 70s. There's a tie at the back and it is done in tears. It's long, it's full length to the ground, and it's in tears. And it's really, really lovely to wear because it weighs nothing. It's just like it's got this really, really fine lawn lining. And the, the silk of the dress is just like, you just feel heavenly when you're wearing it. Oh, the earrings are also Indian from uh, Jaipur. And a lot of traditional Indian earrings have bells, which I think is rather fabulous. They don't usually ring, but I do have a pair that does ring as you walk. So, in another life, I would have been on my way to Morocco to host my culinary tour in Marrakesh. So I thought I would start off my... my discourse on my favorite cookbooks by talking about Morocco, Moroccan food. So obviously the best book that was ever written about Moroccan food was written by guess who? Moi. And this is called Culinary Adventures in Marrakesh. And the thing I like most about this book, I mean it's basically, it's a travel book. It's about what to do, especially in terms of food in Morocco. Um, and it's got recipes in it. But what I really love is, this is Penguin Random House, is the design of the book is really, really gorgeous. Look inside. So there are no photographs of the actual dishes, but you have this absolutely gorgeous graphic design that was done by Random House. Lovely illustrations and, and very, you know, every chapter is divided up by these wonderful, wonderful, this wonderful artwork. And it's got, um, it's got all the favorite recipes that I do, that we eat on my culinary tours and the recipes that I cook when I have friends over. The interesting thing is, until only about 10 years ago, there were very few, you, could, you couldn't find Moroccan cookbooks written by Moroccans because they, they didn't write anything down. Everything, all their recipes were in their head and in their heart. And they were passed down from aunties, from mothers, from maids and whatever. And every kitchen I went into when I first started going to Morocco, which was many years ago, I would ask the ladies um, if they could write it down for me and they would just look at me blankly. Because there is no recipe. It depends on what was in the market. Even for the great classics, they'll change them. It's the same in Indian food, actually. All these old cultures, you know, there's nothing set in stone. And it depends what the season is. You know, you might swap out dates for figs if it's not the right season. You might use a different kind of olive because it's, you know, the olives in spring are different from the olives in autumn. And so the Moroccan recipe books that were being written were mostly written by foreigners, French, Spanish, English, um, and they're very good, but now, of course, there's a huge selection because Morocco has become very um, fashionable, especially the food. But our very own Julie Leclerc, my friend and colleague here in New Zealand, um, wrote a, a few years wrote a very, very good recipe. This is just strictly recipes. There's no talking. It's right to the point of a thing. So it's called Made in Morocco. And it is full, once again, 
gorgeous design because most of the photos were taken by Julie. Look at this. I mean, this is so beautiful. And then you've got all these fab recipes with really good photos. So you know exactly what it's supposed to look like. Very good. Julie Leclerc. You should be able to still find it in a library or online. Now, the next book I'm going to talk about that, I, that came out quite recently. This is a very good woman. Her name is Diana Henry. She is an English food writer and recipe book writer. And she is really the ticket. This book came out oh, probably just before Christmas. And a lot of my foodie friends are cooking from it. This book is particularly helpful because it's winter food. And it's called From the Oven to the Table. And Diana says, this book is for people who love slow cooked food, but they're busy, they have families or whatever. So it's a, it's a put everything together, chuck it in the oven and walk away book. This is her whole thing. If you can't chuck it all in one dish and walk away, then she doesn't want to know about it. And then you come back after a few glasses of wine, you've helped the kids with their homework, you come back and you've got this fabulous, fabulous recipe. Like, look at this one. This is roast pork. And she's particularly good on vegetables. This is aubergines, pumpkin, tomatoes with coconut and green chutney. Look at that. You see, you just go to the supermarket, you buy your vegetables, and then you just put a few little different exotic things with it and you've got this really different meal. So I love her for that reason. They're absolutely doable, these recipes. My next all-time favorite is anything written by Jotam Ottolenghi. Uh, he's based in London. And this book is called, he's written many, many books. They're all really good. You could just open the book at any page and go, I want that. I'm going to cook that. I'm going to go straight to the shop and buy those ingredients. He uses quite a lot of exotic stuff, which is fine with me because I like stretching my imagination. So you'll have um, things, unusual things like pomegranate seeds. You'll have sumac, which is a sour berry, which is ground into a powder. Sumac, he puts a lot of sumac in everything. I love anything sour, you know, like tamarind, stuff like that, really good. So this is your turn. And this book is called Jerusalem, which I think is one of his best books. He's um, like, for example, everybody loves hummus. This is his recipe for hummus with um, grilled lamb and chickpea. Uh, no, what's he got on top? Pine nuts. He's also good on fish. Look at this. I mean, just this photograph is fantastic. This is mackerel, which we don't get a lot of here, but you could use any oily fish, you know, anything that's got like tuna would be fine. Um, with golden beetroot, beetroot and mango salsa. Don't you just want to eat that off that page? I do. When I'm feeling uninspired, you know, these books are just worth their weight in gold. And finally, our very own Australian Stephanie Alexander. This is the biggest, fattest doorstop book in the history of the world. This is Stephanie. She wrote this a few years ago, but she updates it every so often. It's called The Cook's Companion. And it's kind of like the Edmunds cookbook on steroids. It's, I mean, you can see how fat it is. It's got everything you ever needed to know about anything in it. So the book, and it's very intelligently written. Stephanie Alexander does a lot of research. She's known to be a serious cook. She's somebody who, when she says this is how it is, that actually is how it is, because she's very rigorous in her research. So the book starts off where she... She talks, there are no photos. It's just like millions and millions and millions of recipes. She, well, there are photos of trees and stuff. Sheep, Australians, that was her to have a sheep and something. Starts off with a description of utensils and the things you use in a kitchen and the things you must have, the things that aren't so necessary as it turns out. Then she goes on to basics. Like she teaches you how to make a proper vinaigrette, 
how to make a proper bread dough, how to make um, a pastry dough, that sort of thing, basics. And then basically it's A to Z. So you start off with A and you've got, where are my glasses? Everything to do with apples. Anything you could possibly imagine in a million years, it's in this book. Then you go on to B, you've got broccoli. Anything to do with broccoli is in here. You go on to H, you've got ham. You go on to M, you've got mussels and clams, pomegranates, prawns, what to do with salad greens, tongue, what to do with tongue. Tongue is the most beautiful meat. Obviously it has to be slow cooked. So those, my dear gastro nomads, are my favorite books for today. Bon appétit, have a wonderful day, au revoir et merci.